Welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thank you very much for tuning in and spinning that dial in my direction. And joining me as I explore the amazing, incredible, ah, really beautiful, wide world of pens. And you see rotating in front of you two crab-worthy pens. They're Hong Dion models. And I waited for these to complete my N series. We have an N9 and an N12. N12 is piston fill, N9 is a cartridge converter pen. These are made from some very nice turned acrylics, a green one and a purple one. Yeah, two colors that I fancied when I ordered these pens. So I have an announcement to make. Everybody does like top 10 or the worst pens of the year, you know, all those types of videos, and they are fairly popular, but eh, I'm not a, a fan of them. And, you know, they change to me. Uh, every day I'm going to have a different top 10 list of pens. But I'm going to say that the pen maker of 2023 is Hong Dion. And these are the two examples that I would use to talk about that. And we're also going to show the other N series. I'm going to try to put as many of them in numerical order as I can. So we have two happy crabs doing their job holding up pens. So we're going to explore these together. Hey, this is a two for video. You get two pens in one video. Plus there'll be a lot more other Hong Dion's as I justify my decision to call them pen maker of the year. Stay tuned. So why do I like using these two pens as models indicative of some of the great work that Hong Dian has done? Well, number one, they're two very classic designs. Streamlined bullet nose, yeah, shape or balance, and flat-ended with some caps on the end, a la yeah, Parker Dual Fold, and then advanced a little bit with the Pelican Sovereign series. These both have some very nice little interesting details, which Hong Dion has been good at doing with their pens. And the resins in these pens is just great looking. Fit and finish is excellent, as we've come to expect from Hong Dion. So let's look at these individually, but I just wanted to show them together. The other thing that Hong Dion has been doing is the caps come off with a little over one turn, which is excellent. Two completely different sections, and I had to look very hard to find the N9 with the uh, rabbit nib, which has that calligraphy tipping material on the end, which I really enjoy. The N12 just has a regular number six nib. And there's a black section, there's a section that's the same material as the body of the pen. But to me, there's symmetry here in this design, again, a la Parker Dufold and the Pelican Sovereign series. Follows through with that. You have your metal band here separating the section from the barrel. This one has a nice metal ring at the end of the section. A lot of uh, pen makers do that. I think it adds a little bit of class to it. But they've done a nice job here by having a matte end here at the end of the N9. So, needless to say, two very nice pens I'm very happy to have in my hand. We spent some time on the barrel, so let's uh, spend some time with the caps. The N12 has... Uh, a classic for Hong Dion, finial at the top of the cap with a some type of bird there. Could be a dove-like bird and a wreath here. They're into the peace motif, whereas the N9 just has a bullet nose. The clips are different. You know, I prefer the look and design of the clip on the N9. It's a solid piece of metal. Fairly springy, works well. Whereas the N12 has this uh, formed and rolled uh, sheet, and it's also similarly sprung. But I think the reason why these are two different clips is the way they're attached. 
This one is attached by being inserted into the cap and we may find a screw on the inside where this one is part of the finial at the top of the cap. If we go down to the cap band, we'll again see some very interesting differences. The N12, which has the model number on the other side of the cap ring, is a cap band that Ong Dion has been using for a while. It's on a lot of their N models. But the N9 has a very, very nice, interesting, intricate carved design with some matte finish there and polished rings. A very nice bit of detail, which I appreciate. So both of these pens were bought on AliExpress, which I also bought my A6 from. And AliExpress was running a special, so I got a discount on top of the regular listed price. And of course, I wanted that nice calligraphy nib in my N9, which I couldn't find on eBay or Etsy, my other platforms that I look at. And I always show you how I buy my pens because I think it's important to know. I certainly want to know sourcing of pens and pricing. If I watch a video and I'm interested in a pen, it's nice to have that available readily rather than having to go look it up. So, hopefully you enjoy the fact that I add that to my videos. So here's my N9 uh, taken apart. Well, as much as I'm going to do it. So I do take the little ball out or the spring or whatever is in the converter here. From my experience, neither of those objects actually do much to uh, improve ink flow and they do make cleaning it out and sometimes they get stuck down here and it's just a mess a complication that I don't think adds to your pen use enjoyment this is a great nib the plating on all these new pens seem to be very very nice you got your two o-rings there that seal it up very well when it's put into the section and you notice the section is just straight through so that makes when you take it apart like this very easy to clean and the nib is easy to pull out if you need to do that I think we need to bring in the LED as much as we can get it dark in the day and appreciate the resin and more of the engineering and design it's not real dark but I think it's dark enough to have the LED do its magic and show you the amazing amount of detail and color that's in this purple resin. If you look inside the cap, we'll see the standard uh, machining. No, we don't. There's not a ledge there like you can usually see. There's just a little plastic liner at the very top. So that's interesting. And obviously we see more of that amazing resin here in the barrel. You have a metal insert that's very nice so when you unscrew and screw the section it's metal on metal threading a lot of people like that to me it's not critical and the resin is slightly translucent as you can see the light travel up and down ah, just love that resin so I have to admit I'm a real twit it's hard for me to see when I'm doing this close cam up, camera work, but this is the nib assembly that belongs in the N9. I had swapped that out with accidentally with the one in the N12, and it doesn't work. And I found that out when I put it all together and tried to attach the converter. It wouldn't fit because the end of that nib assembly is different. Since we're comparing these two pens, here's the two nib assemblies. This one here is the one out of the N12. And as you can see, it's designed to work with a piston filler, and this one's designed to work with a cartridge converter. The threading is the same, so you can screw them in and out of the right pens, but then the filling system won't work as well. And it's interesting to see how the engravings differ between these two. Nice year of the rabbit on the N9, which is that calligraphy nib. And you can see the difference in the tipping material there. Two very nice nibs. And they both have that new feed design that Hong Dian's been using. So here we have the N12. And I've disassembled as much as we're going to do for this part of the video. 
And this is the right nib assembly that goes into the section. The section doesn't unscrew. We're going to check out the piston height with our trusty measuring stick here. And we'll go in. And we'll see that it doesn't go in, it doesn't retract as far as you would like it to. So I will take out this piston and try to give it more travel. I'm comfortable doing that. Not all pen reviewers are. Of course we need to bring in the trusty LED and play it on this resin. Like the N9 purple resin, this is a very nice resin, a lot of pearlescence in it. Some may refer to them as Chatoyan C. It's similar. Probably tomato-tomato differences. And it is slightly translucent. If we look inside, we'll see similar to what we saw on the N9. There's no machined ledge in there. Just a little of a brass thing that holds in the top finial. The same with the barrel, but what we really want to look at is that piston. And we'll see a gap between the end of the piston when it's all the way up. It's hard to really see. It's that's a little bit of a... There we go. That looks good there. If we turn the piston knob, we'll see the piston move down and move up. And there's that gap, which is bigger than it should be. I don't think we're going to be able to get it totally all the way up, but we certainly can get more movement than we currently have. So with the N12, not only did we get a wrench, but we got a little bottle of lubricating oil, which I'm assuming is silicone oil, but I'll use my silicone grease because I'm more comfortable with that. We're going to use the wrench. We're going to just undo the piston cap enough for the wrench to fit in there. We got to pretty much take it all the way up. The wrench will fit into those two grooves. We'll tighten down the blind cap and then we'll turn it got to go off camera to do this so I had to use a lobster band to give me some torque on that barrel and now as you turn it counterclockwise or lefty loosey you can now unscrew it. It just took a lot of effort, more than usual, to get it started. And we can unscrew it easily once it gets started. And we see that standard piston assembly. I think this is plastic with some kind of, you know, red, uh, <clears throat> pigment in there to give it that uh, aluminum look. And you can see how the wrench fits in there. So, I know some reviewers don't want to do this, but I'm going to take that out. And as you can see, there's that gap there. So I'm going to play around with it and see if I can make it less. As I expected, you can see it's a little bit less there, but there's movement there. And there's nothing you can do about that. This is really well lubricated. So we're going to reassemble and use our measuring stick to see if we've accomplished anything. Maybe a little bit. So have we seen with other Hong Dian models, I did reduce it a few millimeters, but not all the way up to where that tape is. And if we push the piston all the way down, we'll see it that uh, pencil mark does indicate that it's down where they usually are. So I'm happy with that. And it becomes nice and snug when it's all the way up. It's right where it should be. So these are three pens that I will compare. The N12, the Hongdeon 960, and a Pelican M800. So what do these share in common? Well, a black finial or cap at the end of the barrel. A metal finial at the top of the cap. A nice formed clip 
this one certainly is very, very classic in the Pelican tradition. And a cap band, fairly small cap band at the bottom of the cap. This one, uh, these two, the barrel and cap are the same resin. Pelican occasionally will do the cap in a resin similar to the barrel, but not the ones that have the striped rolled sheets in their barrel. Let's take a look at them uncapped. So uncapped, we'll notice some more similarities and dissimilarities. The 960 is the shortest of this group. The N12 is slightly longer than the M800. They're comparable. But what I find interesting is the way the sections are done. They both have comparable size nibs. This looks a little bigger than the number six. These are both in the number six family. Let's zoom in on the section and nibs. To me, I really like what they've done with the section here on the N12. It's by far the longest section of this group. The diameters of all these are very, very similar, but this is very short, and the 960 is similarly short. Notice the metal bands here and here, but not on the Pelican. And we have a metal band here at the end of the section on all these three. It's done very well on the N12. Certainly a nice ornate nib. Obviously the 18 karat nib on the M800 stands on its own, and that's a nice oblique nib that's been ground there, or talic nib, I'm sorry, talic oblique, they're in a similar family. But I'm just impressed with the N12 the more I look at it. So why is Hong Dion Pen Maker of the Year in 2023? Well, I present to you these pens that all have N in their model number, except for this one is a 960, but you saw earlier how I felt that this design needed to be included with these pens. So there's mostly piston fillers here, also a very interesting trait. And we only have two with the round end, the N9 and the N6, I'm pretty certain. Two N7s. A lot of these pens have some metal in them, all metal, metal cap, metal cap, metal cap, all metal, all metal, turned acrylic. All of the resins here is a turned acrylic resin. All of these pens have very interesting design elements, both aesthetic design elements and functional design elements. These two have that great calligraphy nib. This one has a number nine nib. I mean, ah, some versions of dark chrome some versions of, of stealthy black, some really impressive colors. Ah, greens, blues, greens, purple, reds, blues, peacock blue, gray, black, yellow, orange, or orange and yellow. So show me another pen maker that has this variety of pens, all of which are pretty much under 30 US dollars. Some of them are almost 20 US dollars. I mean, it's ridiculous. It's amazing. It's part of the wide world of pens that I'm so happy to be part of, and I'm really, really happy to share with you. Speaking of amazing Hong Dion pens, we have the D5 with a phenomenal, unbelievable amount of detail. Every little bit of this pen has some historical significance based on the Quinn dynasty, which was the first one to unify the many providences in China. I did a lot of uh, videos on this model. I just find both of these, the black and gold and the red and dark chrome models to be excellent. Again, aesthetics, unbelievable. Functionality, amazing. Feel in the hand. If these were made in another country, they would be hundreds of dollars and people would be happy to buy them. We should be happy that the Chinese are able to make pens like this that we can enjoy. And then there's the D1, Hong Dion's skeleton model. And what makes this one unique is it has a very soft nib. 
which I think I'll include in my writing samples of Hong Dion pens. Stay tuned. So we can't forget Hong Dion's second skeleton pen, the A6, D1, A6Y. They have uh, no rhyme or reason to some of their pen models. Nice little inlay there with some epoxy over top of it. There's a nice little dove on the D1. Different clips. It's a nice arrow clip. Nice and functional, very sturdy. And this is that classic Hong Dion, extremely sturdy, functional, spring-loaded clip. Nice cap bands. The A6 is on the top here, D1's on the back side of the cap. I just, again, impressed with the design work that they've done, you know, and the dark chrome looks really nice. And the dark acrylic underneath of it. This is totally clear and transparent. This has a nice color to it. Wow, Hong Dion, you're on a roll in 2023. So this pen wasn't in the group of the ends. I just don't put it into that same category. This is its own category into itself. Yes, it's an N23. Definitely a rabbit theme to this pen. Beautiful engravings and it's coated. So you don't really feel them at all. Nice small band there at the end of the cap. Just a very well executed design bullet nose that comes off in one and a quarter turns and we'll see a beautiful rabbit nib and this is one of those calligraphy nibs that writes so nicely and there's a little band there it's just another example of Hong Dion artistry in their pens which makes them pen maker of the year 2023 so after all the excitement and focusing on the N pens, I forgot about the C1. A very affordable pen. Amazing Hong Dion's range of pens that they make. I love the black and yellow. And what's nice, pull off cap, and it has a hooded nib. And after I had let this pen set for a couple weeks, I uncapped it and it wrote first time. Great. So, the pens also have in common, they are both metal pens, but made much differently. Aluminum here and a brass tube here. But just goes to show you, Hong Dion has a great variety of pens. So as of the filming of this video, the purple N9 appears to not be available on any platform. So, you know, one could theorize that they just had a limited amount of the resin, turned as many pens as they could, which probably was a few amount, and they sold out quickly. And now we're left with these three colors on the N9. The other thing that I find amazing about these two pens is we have the N11, which is a beautiful piston-filled pen, very well made. And you have the N9, which is cartridge converter, also well made, but certainly you would think that the amount of materials, engineering, fabrication, or whatever, would make the N11 more expensive than the N9, but it's not that much. Here's some examples on various platforms, and I think it's important from my viewpoint as a pen reviewer to show you the various platforms that, if you're interested in a pen, do your research. As a consumer, you know, I have a global audience and you live in many, many different places. So you may not have the same buying options that I have in the United States, but I'm certain you have some. Explore them. Don't just go in to one buying platform and decide, ah, oh, this is great, I'll buy it, blah, blah, blah. Search around because every penny is important to all of us and we don't want to spend more pennies than is necessary to acquire what we want, need, desire. And I think these two pens are something that we all need. There'll be no live writing in this video, but I wanted to show the various nibs that Hong Dion makes, show you the line that they lay down. So these are two extra fine nibs, but if you look at the swirls here, you'll see with a little pressure on the downstroke, it opens up. That's the D1 nib, which is a little soft. As you can see from these four, 
they're all very wet writers. This is a special Noodler's ink blend that I made that dries almost instantaneously, so that's what you would expect. Here's the N11, which is fine. And I think it's fairly visible that the fine line is a little bit wider than the extra fine line. But that's to be expected. So apparently, this is like a 0.38, this is a 0.5. Here's the medium nib, which is about a 0.7. And there's definitely a, a very big difference between the fine nib and the medium nib. And of course, here's the calligraphy nib. And it gives you a lot of variation in your writing. It feels, so the medium nib is really, really smooth. This is really, really smooth. The extra fine, you can feel some feedback in the writing. Yes, you may have noticed that the E is now complete on the D1. I didn't notice that until halfway through the filming. But all of these nibs I enjoy quite a bit. I mean, how many extra fine nibs you're going to get that are this wet? And these are all different inks, so don't worry about the inks. But they're all good inks, and they're all comparable. So I think I'm comfortable with this comparison. Back to the pens. Hope you have a great holiday. Hopefully you can find a writing instrument that brings joy to your life, smile to your face, and motivate your hand to put something down, a note, a letter, a journal entry, a doodle, a drawing. Just do something with your pens or just admire them, whatever you'd like to do. That's the key to life, figuring out what you want and doing it and enjoying it. So I wish all of you enjoyment in your life.